uh, Los Angeles, they have something called the Hollywood stock market, where there's a million different people that participate in buying bonds and warrants and various different other types of derivatives around movie stars, new films that are coming to market, directors. And what Hollywood, with the benefit of this to the studios is they can get a very accurate demand forecast for how many people are actually going to show up to a film before it launches. Similar thing in the video game. They have something called the SIM exchange in the video game industry. And here, anyone in the public can go on and join, and you can buy shares of hardware consoles, like the Nintendo Wii, the Sony PlayStation, the Xbox 360. You can buy shares of upcoming game launches. And what's great about this is that the game publishers and the hardware manufacturers and the retailers can get very in good insights into the actual forecasted demand on a level much more accurate than their internal forecasts would give them about what the sales of new video game titles are going to be. Now, in today's world, probably the biggest product launches are anything that Apple does, right? And so this Friday, the Apple 4S is going to go on sale. And one of the big challenges Apple and its contract manufacturers and suppliers have is what is going to be the demand for this new product? Now, a lot of you might be saying, anything that Apple produces turns to gold. Why don't they just make as many as humanly possible? And I'm sure that we'll sell them. But Apple was not so certain, right? If you remember a week or two ago, everyone was thinking they were going to announce the Apple 5, iPhone 5, and they didn't. Right, they announced the iPhone 4S. It's gotten mediocre reviews, even though it's got better voice recognition software, and it's got 1080p digital HD video and a bunch of other stuff. People really were expecting a big bang launch. The other factor that's incredibly influenced demand is, of course, the passing of Steve Jobs, which has resulted in a lot of people buying Apple products just because of the enthusiasm around the culture that he created. The same thing happened when Michael Jackson died. Within 10 minutes, all of his products sold out on Amazon.com because people wanted to remember him and buy merchandise around it. So those two things actually had a heavy degree of influence. Now, it turns out that demand has been overwhelming. They have sold over a million units of the iPhone 4S in the first 24 hours. But what's great and what's revolutionary about this is Apple and AT&T and Sprint and Verizon and everyone else selling the phone, they know in advance, or at least a couple weeks in advance, what demand for the product's going to be. And they can start to align their supply chains and their manufacturing capacity based on predicted demand. Now, historically, the way that we've had to forecast demand has been through point of sale data or sales forecasts or inventory positions. But the thing I always think about point of sale data is it's in many respects looking backwards, right? You're looking at buying patterns over the past couple weeks, the past couple months, or maybe last year. What happened last week in the stock market or last year in the stock market certainly isn't indicative of what's going to happen this year. What happened last year in the Major League Bennett baseball pennant race is not indicative of what's happening this year, right? So how can we get some forward-looking demand signals? How can we get customers to tell us what they're going to buy before they buy it? Well, fortunately, this whole process is getting a lot easier because people are putting more and more of their future buying intentions up on the internet. Look at something simple like the Amazon.com wish list. It's been around for 10 or 12 years. But Amazon knows, and anybody that makes their wish public, any of us can know, with a relatively high degree of precision, what's going to be bought and when, because most people will enter in dates around this. Now, a lot of you are sitting in the audience saying, yeah, but retail sales are only 6 online sales are only 6% of overall retail sales. That's true at an aggregate level, but look at categories like electronics, computers, games, books, movies, where they're approaching 50%. And even those products where it's still in the low single digits, the amount of purchasing influenced by online research before an actual physical transaction occurs in the store is growing astronomically. So you can see in the yellow chart here, online influence sales. Now, companies are getting more and more sophisticated about the ways that they're trying to estimate sales forecasts and demand. UBS announced last year that they were actually paying commercial satellite operators to fly over Walmart and Target stores so they could count the cars in the parking lot. And they would develop these statistical models that correlated the number of cars in the parking lot to what they thought Walmart sales were going to do. And they were able to sell that data to their hedge funds and their exclusive clients to give them an edge in stock market trading. Right? So I think that this is the way that the supply chain is going to go. I think supply chain planners are going to start thinking like hedge fund managers. Now, this is probably a crazy time to introduce this when we've got thousands of people standing outside the New York Stock Exchange saying Occupy Wall Street. I'm standing up here telling you, you know, be more like them, right? But in, in all seriousness, this, uh, there's a massive amount of data. Most of it's digitally being captured. This is a, a great example of a big data problem, and I think the companies that can harness that data and make use of it are going to have a competitive advantage in the market. And it's getting easier and easier. 
Here's an example of something called Google Flu Trends. So this is from Google.org, not Google.com, Google.org is their nonprofit philanthropic arm where they do a lot of betas and a lot of interesting uh, research. But one of the things that Google.org is trying to do is better predict flu outbreaks. And actually, they're able to do it a lot better than the Centers for Disease Control. And the way they do it is they analyze search patterns in local different areas to see who's searching on cold symptoms, flu medication, tissues, orange juice, other things that they've been able to correlate with flu outbreaks. Now, the advantage that Google has is they can do this in real time, whereas the CDC waits days, if not weeks, for doctors to report back in through a very antiquated uh, public health reporting system on how this stuff is done. And in fact, the World Health Organization found out first about the SARS virus back a few years ago because some folks in Canada were monitoring chatter on the internet and identified it um, before even the local authorities knew about it. Now, what's really cool is that Google's got a tool that allows you to do this. They have something called Insights. So you can go and put your product name into this tool called Insights, and you can pull up a heat map of the US or the world, and it'll show you who's searching on that term and where. And you can filter it down by dates and a variety of different parameters and use it as yet another input uh, for your demand forecasting model. 